Oh, that's better. Yeah, when that um when this pop up and the chat is just a black <laughs> screen, that means some something was wrong. Okay, yeah. And I just hit live. Normally I can catch that. That's something I can catch before we start. And I didn't even look at it until I went to start saying hey to everybody and it was all blacked out. So forgive me, beautiful people. But anyway. Happy Wednesday, our girl Shalom Avia. Greetings, Vinette. Greetings, Shebro. Hey, girl. Hey, all praise to the Creator. Hana Shalom. Key. Hey, girl. Hey, Kendra. Peace and blessings. And everybody else here hanging out in the background. I know it's probably just y'all. Ain't nobody hanging out in the background yet. I can see. But anyway, top of the day to you. All right, y'all. So let's get started. Dawn, Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Am I keeping up with the new session homework? I am. I got to have something turned in tonight. I will get it done. I got my discussion to finish. And then I got to turn in my first assignment tonight. So, yes, I'm we just start. We're starting off good. We're starting off good. Um, I'm keeping to my schedule for the most part. I had to do a little adjustment just today. You know, but we're working through it. Jamia, shalom, shalom. All right, beautiful people. Father, we thank you that you completely light up the room when you're present. <laughs> and we know that you're always present. All right, y'all. So we are today, it is day 288 of year four of reading through the books of the Lord of the Prophets. And of the four-year consecutive day count, day 1,308. Today, we are still in the book of Sue. Yesterday, we only read like one chapter. It was pretty long. I just added my stories and then made it pretty long. But today we are on chapter 5 on page 92. And then when we get done here, we're going to pick back up in the spirit guide to um, feel guide to the spirit world on page 187. All right, y'all. Set apart Ema Grand Rising. All right, y'all. Page 92 of Owaski, chapter 5. After this manner were the words of the initiation led by the Ethereum host to wit. God on the throne said, O Eoa, and in the parentheses after Eoa, E O I H, Jehovah, Almighty, Almighty, boundless. After Almighty, the second Almighty is the reference number four, and it says the same thing except for the second Almighty is in square brackets. Almighty, Almighty, boundless. Verse three, response. How shall I comprehend thee, thou mighty one, God, thou higher than all gods and lords? Response, who moves the universe with power unlimited? God, creator and controller of the corporal worlds. Response, in whose hands the ethereal firmament is like a fruitful garden, wider than the boundaries of time. God, whose members are all space. Response, whose members are all that is within place beyond measure. God, thou, O Eoa, thou fountain and terminus of all things. Response, Eoa, Eoa, of whom all things are but parts attuned to thy will. God, thou all person, O Eoa, incomprehensible. Response, who speakest in the light, whose voice is in the progress of the universe. Verse 14, God is speaking again. Eoa, thou all giver, by giving, createth. Response, what are thy secrets, O mighty one? Eoa, everlasting and greater than magnitude. God, I see nothing in all the universe but thee. All selves are but fractions of thyself, O Eoa. Oh, this just reminded me of somebody's email, not email, inbox. I forgot who was conversating back and forth the other day and I listened to the last message but I didn't get a chance to respond to it the name is right down the tip of my tongue I respond to it today but they asked they reminded me about this because they asked a question about black root science this and it has something to do with the cells okay God I see nothing in all the universe but thee all cells are but fractions of thyself O Eoa Response, who hath not beholden thee, O Eoa? Thy person is in the east and west and north and south, below and above, far and near. God, who hath not heard thy voice? 
Who has not found thy hand that pusheth him along? Response, without thee, O Eoa, I go not, I move not. I set out to do things of myself and fail utterly. So it looked like they're going back and forth, not with each other, but it seemed like they're just lauding praises on the creator. God and then everybody else. God and then everybody else. God and then everybody else responds again. Verse 20. God, what is man before thee, O Eoa? He setteth up a kingdom, and it falleth as a house of straw. Response, O Eoa, how I have wasted my time. My buildings were lighter than chaff. My virtues were but bubbles, and they are burst and gone. God, when will man learn to attune himself to thee, O Eoa? Response, how can I put away myself, O Eoa? Have I not said I cannot, I cannot put away my own judgment? God, man said, I will not put away my judgment, and lo, therein doeth he it. Response, have I not said... To protect myself is the first law, and to preserve mine own, the highest law. God, man assumeth to protect himself, because he is without faith in thee, O Eoa, and to preserve his own, which in fact is not his. And here the light fell upon the throne, and Jehovah spake out of the light, saying, I have called thee, O man, from thy youth up. My voice hath never ceased in thine ear who can come into life without me who can measure his own footsteps beholdeth he treadeth on my ground of all that he has made the substance is mine this is beautiful this creator responding back to them now the kingdoms of the earth and the kingdoms of gods and lords in heaven what are they more than imitations of my works wherein they imitate me well I am with them, hold on, wherein they imitate me well, I am with them in wisdom, love, and power. Shall a man butt his head against a wall to prove he is greater than his creator? Behold, I came in the ancient days, saying, Strive to become one with me, and thou shalt rejoice that I created thee. Strive to set up for thyself, and thy vanity shall in time pierce thee as a two-edged sword. Hear the love of thy creator, O man, for I made thee. Hear the love of thy creator, O man, for I made thee with fondness for thy sons and daughters. Let me pick this up. I didn't realize. I just kicked it out the way. Okay. Let me come back because that was going to bug me. Verse 29, I'll read again. The kingdoms of the earth and the kingdoms of gods and lords in heaven, what are they more than imitations of my works? Wherein they imitate me well, I am with them in wisdom, love, and power. Shall a man butt his head against the wall to prove he is greater than his creator? Behold, I came in the ancient days, saying, Strive to become one with me, and thou shalt rejoice that I created thee. Strive to set up for thyself, and thy vanity shall in time pierce thee as a two-edged sword. Hear the love of thy creator, O man, for I made thee with fondness for thy sons and daughters. Of love like my own, I gave thee a part. And as thou sendest to thy wayward son, beseeching him to return to thee, so do I bring my messengers from higher worlds to call thee. And that thou mayest not mistake their higher place, I give them power and wisdom surpassing thee. The voice ceased, and then the initiate said, Henceforth I will serve only thee, O Eoa, nor will I more think what shall become of me, for I know thou wilt appropriate me wisely. Sorry, this thing popping up. Derry CM, Shalom, Elijah, BC, blessings, blessings. Verse 31, I read again. The voice ceased, and then the innate it said, Henceforth I will serve only thee, O Eoa, nor will I more think what shall become of me, for I know thou wilt appropriate me wisely, O Eoa. Accordingly, as the stone is hewn and polished, so will thou put it in the walls of thy house. My labor is to hew and polish and perfect my own soul forever. 
My soul shall become as a shining star. My love like thy ethereal angels, and my plain raiment, and plain my raiment, and clean forever. Nor more will I boast, nor speak untruth forever. Nor sloth attain me, nor vanity, nor self, nor will I talk of myself, nor criticize my brethren, nor my neighbors, for they are thine, O Eor. To do righteous works and lift up my fellows shall be my labor, henceforth forever. Make me strong in thee, O Eoa, and wise to do thy will forever. Amen. All right, chapter 6. So great were the words and music of the ceremonies that the people were entranced beyond measure. The old and divided kingdoms, which were without unity and discipline, were now replaced by extreme sanctity and decorum. Sue said, Hear me, O God, I will counsel thee further. Know then that the false gods and false lords have gone off to build up kingdoms of their own, nor know they what happened, what hath happened in Horrid. Suffer them to proceed until they have purified the corporeans from familiars and fetals. But when they have finished, call thou another festival of all these people, and also send word to the false gods and false lords who deny Jehovah, the all person, and they will come, bringing their slaves, having themselves adorned in extravagant raiment and jewelry. For they will expect by their pageantry to triumph over all other gods and men, hoping to carry back with them the millions of subjects. So quick recap from yesterday. We know that these first group of false gods and false lords, by the end, I believe it was the third day of the ceremony with Sue coming, they ripped off all their clothes, all their, their high-priced uh, jackets and crowns and stuff. Like, take all this crap, teach me. I'm going to be your slave, right? And so um, that was the first section of them. This was them in um, chapter 5. Now lining themselves up with the great light, the creator. And now was like, we'll go ahead and do what we're supposed to be doing. Clearly, there's a light higher than us, and we want some of that, right? Okay. Read verse 2 again. Sue said, Hear me, O God, I will counsel thee further. Know then that the false gods and false lords have gone off to build up kingdoms of their own, nor know they what hath happened in Horrid. Suffer them to proceed until they have purified the corporeans from familiars and fetals. But when they have finished, call thou another festival of all these people, and also send word to the false gods and false lords who deny Jehovah, the all person, and they will come, bringing their slaves having themselves adorned in extravagant raiment and jewelry, for they will expect by their pageantry to triumph over all of the gods and men, hoping to carry back with them millions of subjects. God said, I perceive, O Sue, son of Jehovah. So God did as commanded, and sure enough, in course of time, the false gods and false lords stripped the barbarians of the earth, uh, stripped the barbarians, of the earth, of their familiars and fetals, making slaves of such spirits in heaven. And it came to pass that God gave another festival, and it was greater than the first. And there were present upward of 3,000 million angels who had become enlisted in righteous works. This was, be this was the beginning of the third year of Sue, and his wisdom and power were now manifested all around the world, on earth and in heaven. And this is what happened in reference to the false gods and false lords who came to the festival equipped in chariots and ships and with banners and flags and crowns and diadems and such wonderful extravagances like the like of which had not been in heaven since the flood. And each and every false god and false lord endeavored to outdo the others in show and parade. As might be expected, the first day of the festival Neither won their applause nor censor. The second day, they ceased to attract attention. For the thrift and purity and wisdom manifested in the countless millions of the second resurrection caused even children to receive more praise than the gods and lords with all their glitter and show. Oh, they big mad right now. 
On the third day, one half of the false gods and false lords cast aside their adornments and appeared in plain white, pleading to be initiated into the mysteries of the second resurrection. Teach me. Listen, they're like, shoot, what is going on here? This is not what we thought this was going to be. On the third day, one half of these false gods and false lords cast aside their adornments and appeared in plain white, pleading to be initiated into the mysteries of the second resurrection. And on the following day, the rest of them came also, seeking like admission. Whereupon the light of Jehovah spake through God on the throne, saying, We thank ye, O gods, O ye gods and lords. What are ye doing? But as yesterday ye asked for kingdoms, desiring to be leaders and great workers over and above your fellows. And ye obtained your desires, becoming gods and lords over millions. And these became your dutiful subjects, and ye adorned your thrones and your persons in great splendor. Behold, I gave a festival, and ye came as living witnesses of what self-made gods and lords could accomplish. And your dutiful subjects came with you to attest their loyalty and good faith in your wisdom and power. Now have ye cast aside your crowns and high estate, praying to become workers amongst the host of men and women? Are ye not mad? And are ye not making yourselves the destroyers of your own subjects? For behold, because of your abjuration of self-pomp and self-glory, all your subjects are cast aside in ignorance and misery. Sue doing this Jedi mind trick on them. They're like, oh, wait. What? Then we just had this conversation a few thousand years ago, right? You wanted your own kingdom. You got your kingdom, right? You this big leader. But now you come in here and you casting all this aside to become one of my workers? What's going on, man? Right? So, no, it was all a setup. He was using his wisdom and power. Brian's Job, the Yog has entered. Shalom. As might be expected, the first day of the festival, I'm going back up to verse 6, we're on page 93, chapter 6 of the book of Sue, son of Jehovah. As might be expected, the first day of the festival, neither won their applause nor censure. The second day, they ceased to attract attention. For the thrift and purity and wisdom manifested in the countless millions of the second resurrection. Hold on. The second day, they ceased to attract attention for the thrift and purity and wisdom manifested in the countless millions of the second resurrection caused even children to receive more praise than the gods and lords with all their glitter and show. On the third day, one half of the false gods and false lords cast aside their adornments and appeared in plain white, pleading to be initiated into the mysteries of the second resurrection. And on the day following, the rest of them came also, seeking like admission. Whereupon the light of Jehovah spake through God on the throne, saying, Bethink ye, O ye gods and lords, what are ye doing? But as yesterday ye asked for kingdoms, desiring to be leaders and great workers, over and above your fellows, and ye obtained your desires, becoming gods and lords over millions, and these became your dutiful subjects, and ye adorned your thrones and your persons in great splendor. Behold, I gave a festival, and ye came as living witnesses of what self-made gods and lords could accomplish, and your dutiful subjects came with you to attest their loyalty and good faith in your wisdom and power. Now have ye cast aside your crowns in high estate, praying to become workers amongst the hosts of men and women? Are ye not mad? And are ye not making yourselves the destroyers of your own subjects? For behold, because of your abjuration of self-pomp and self-glory, all your subjects are cast aside in ignorance and misery. With one voice, the self-gods and self-lords answered, saying, Alas, O God, what shall we do? Our crowns we can give away, our raiment and jewels and our thrones and kingdoms. But, O oh God, we cannot give away our subjects. They will not go. We have bound them to us, and we are bound to them because we accepted them. What shall we do now, O oh God? The burden is more than we can bear. It's like, I don't want the kingdom no more, but they won't go nowhere. Well, bro, this is, this, this is how the game is played. You want to be a king? You get a kingdom. And you can't just run off and leave them when you're tired of playing king. You're going to have to do something. I want it not. I don't want this kingdom. Well, sorry, this is the way we grow. Right? You can't 
we just can't let you leave these things undone, right? You did it. You got to fix it, right? With one voice, the self-gods and self-lords answered, saying, Alas, O God, what shall we do? Our crowns we can give away, our raiment and jewels, and our thrones and kingdoms. But, O God, we cannot give away our subjects. They will not go. We have bound them to us, and, they are bound, and we are bound to them because we accepted them. What shall we do, O God? The burden is more than we can bear. God said, Be not disconsolate, O gods and lords. Ye have done a great work. Ye have rescued millions and millions of familiars and fields. And even before ye applied for the resurrection, behold, most of your subjects had already deserted you. <laughs> Hear the judgment of your creator, which is that when all your subjects and fields are risen in wisdom and virtue and good works, so as to take the sex... To so as to take the second resurrection, even on that same day shall ye be promoted. For only until then can ye have freedom of soul. Okay, so until all of them, the ones that still here, right? That still still hanging around in your kingdom, and the ones that got away from you, until all of them have risen in wisdom, when the last of them have risen in the highest wisdom. That you currently have on that day. That day right there. All you guys will be promoted. Verse 14. God said be, di be not disconsolate. O gods and lords. Ye have done a great work. Ye have rescued millions and millions of familiars and fetals. And even before ye applied for the resurrection. Behold most of your subjects had already deserted you. Hear the judgment of your creator. Which is that when all your subjects and fetals are risen in wisdom and virtue and good works so as to take the second resurrection even on that same day ye shall be promoted for only until then can ye have freedom of soul the voice ceased and the self gods and self lords answered thou art just O jehovah we will go to work amongst our poor and ignorant subjects and make them comprehend thy wisdom power and justice for 10 days, the festival lasted, and then it ended. Thus were the first established rites and ceremonies in the lower heaven as to a power to work wisdom and virtue. And from that time ever after, music and marching and dancing were included in all ceremonies by the gods and lords of heaven. So they said this is where the ceremonies and rites began. And we can still see that in a lot of places, but they've lost sight of what it was supposed to do not that we do this because we're this type of religious people and this is just what we're supposed to do obeying these feast days and we do this just like this yeah like you can stop doing that because you don't even understand the purpose of why you're doing it, it was to raise you to a higher wisdom right it's just that it's just a model there right to teach you a higher principle once you learn a higher principle you can put the model away because now you walk in it right it's simple. That's what the rites and ceremonies are for. The people, you got to do this and pass over here. Did you get your lamb? First of all, we ain't supposed to be eating meat. You know, you didn't forget. This was a model to teach you a higher wisdom, right? And of course, they had chopped and screwed it up and added some stuff and took some stuff away. Now, all of you are flesh eating vagabonds. All right, it's one more chapter. It's one more. You know what? What time is it? 24 minutes we'll read this last chapter and i got some good i got some good news for y'all hold up let me finish this chapter before i tell y'all don't go nowhere don't go nowhere chapter seven in the fifth year of sue he dispatched swift messengers of op and tavok where in the world okay all right, chapter seven. In the fifth year of Su, he dispatched swift messengers to Apentavak in Ethera, saying, Thus saith Su, God of two Ethereal worlds, behold, I am so joining on the earth, and with the God of heaven and his lords, have prepared one thousand million brides and bridegrooms for Jehovah's Ethereal harvest. Greeting to Nista of Ho, of Ho and Toen, goddess, in the name of Jehovah. Send an Aravagna and complete the resurrection of the father's brides and bridegrooms. Let me read the whole verse again. 
In the fifth year of Su, he dispatched swift messengers to Apentavak in Ethera, saying, Thus saith Su, God of two Ethereal worlds, Behold, I am sojourning on the earth, and with the God of heaven and his lords, and have prepared one thousand million brides and bridegrooms for Jehovah's Ethereal harvest. Greeting to Nesta of Ho and Toen, Goddess, in the name of Jehovah, send an heir of Vagna and complete the resurrection of the fathers, brides, and bridegrooms. Sue came down there and got to work. He got there. They got up off the throne. He's like, uh uh, stay there. I ain't taking your throne. I just came here to do a quick work to help y'all get this thing popping. You stay on the throne. I'm going to go out here throughout your kingdom. I'll be back, all right? In a few years, I'm going to be done with this and y'all can keep on. Keep on with the keep, keep on with the keeping on with the party, right? Verse two. So it came to pass in Ethera, the goddess Nista provided an Aravagna, an Ethereum ship, resolving to come as commander in chief. Sue advised God, saying, "Make thou of this matter a great testimony in thy heaven. Send therefore thy messengers into all parts and to thy lords of the earth, inviting all people to be present." to witness the ascent of Jehovah's bride and bridegrooms. God did as commanded, and on the day of the appearance of Nista, the daughter of Jehovah, in her sonship, in the firmament, there were assembled in Horeb countless millions of souls inspired of Jehovah. Great was the rejoicing and the manifestations of delight when the sonship came in full view, descending like a world on fire. And when she passed Chinvat and was fully within the earth's vortex, the enthusiasm of the people knew no bounds. They sang and prayed and danced and clapped with their hands as if mad with delight. Meantime, the brides and bridegrooms had been arrayed in ethereal white and were now saluting those whom they were soon to leave. Quietly, the Ethereum hosts filled their part in the great play of the immortal resurrection, very gods and goddesses in demeanor. Nearer and nearer came Nista in her sonship, slowly turning and descending with 10,000 with 10,000 curtains suspended and waving and 10 times 10,000 banners and flags waving above and around. And then slowly down, lower and lower, to the Aravagna, rested on the plateau of Horeb, to the south of the Temple of Jehovah. Gus, Gasitavi, yeah, marshalless to the throne of Su, in Israka, with 10,000 deputies, went forward and with open arms received Nista, goddess descended, saluting with the sign of the star and square, having been warm friends 200,000 years in the plains of Oyad, in the Ethereum S2 of Hydan, the spiritual center of the orbit of the great serpent, when in Zagal Gothaka. Yep, I probably messed that up. Verse 10, page 94. The Isinars of both hosts were chanting, and the angels of the Aravat that coming forth in hundreds of thousands to be saluted by the previously trained brides and bridegrooms of Jehovah and by the hosts of Su, the Ethereum labors. And when Nisa came up to the throne, God and great Su rose up amidst the light, now fast gathering as a mantle of brilliant fire over the place of council. Su said, All hail, O Nisa, Jehovah's daughter. God said, In Jehovah's name, welcome, O Nisa. To which Nista answered, saying, By the wisdom and power of Jehovah, O my beloved. And Sue and God parted, and Nista ascended and sat in the midst of the throne. After the ceremonies of salutation, Nista said, Let the brides and bridegrooms of Jehovah approach the throne of God. The marshals then ushered them to their places, a thousand million, and the swift messengers bounded them on all sides so that the responses should be uniform and as if spoken by one person, whereupon Nista spake from the throne, and the brides and bridegrooms responded in the usual form of gods and goddesses, and then took the necessary vows and renunciations of the earth and lower heaven according to Jehovah's commandments. When the ceremonies were finished, God proclaimed one day of recreation, which was participated in joyously by upward of 4,000 
million souls. So on the next day, Nista and her host with a thousand million brides and bridegrooms entered the era of Wagner amidst the cheers and weeping of millions of atmospherians who had never witnessed so grand a spectacle. So anytime they have a graduation, we've noticed that it's always a female, a woman who comes and graduates the class. There is a God who sits on the throne. There is a, a higher ethereal God, whether it be male or female, they'll come down and they'll help to raise up during the period of time. And when they're done with this work, while the God is uh, still ruling or they put a, or they put a sub God or like a vice president on the throne, the God will go with the higher Orion chief or whoever it is that then came down like Fragga Patty or something. Uh, hold on. I meant to say that the right way. Jamil sent me, she said it and she sent it to me. I think she said for Gopati. I think I might have messed that up still, but I think she said, if she remember correctly, um, that uh, Cosmo Cow said that the proper pronunciation was Fragopati. Now, Fragopati, because I didn't got so used to Fraga Patty. <laughs> but I'm like, people ain't gonna know who I'm talking about if I say Fragopati. I gotta keep saying Fraga Patty now. <laughs> Look, is that that's how you say it? For Fragopati? Oh, Jamia, sis. I got that work. Look, <laughs> that's why I said, stay tuned. Don't go nowhere, y'all. It ain't everything, but I got I got a little bit of the good stuff. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, let me finish this. Yeah, so it's the women who graduate the the class, at least so far from what we've seen all the way through here. When it's time for the graduation of bride and bridegrooms. It's, the, it's uh, one of the females who come, one of the high-ranking Ethereum goddesses who come, once mortal, right, one-time human being, um, and most of them, they've come, they weren't raised up on the earth. If I, if I remember correct, it could be one or two who were actually born and raised up from the earth, if I remember correctly. I could have my people mixed up. Um, but anyway, they, they've been around for thousands and thousands of years right so and they're really at a, a higher level now they're conducting the graduation they're going to get the brides and bridegrooms and taking them to their next level of education okay verse 15 we almost done it's 22 verses here and this is actually the end of the book of Sue. when the ceremonies were finished god proclaimed one day of recreation which was participated in joyously by upward of 4,000 million souls. So on the next day, Nista and her host with a thousand million brides and bridegrooms entered the era of Wagner amidst the cheers and weeping of millions of atmospherians who had never witnessed so grand a spectacle. And then Nista, by the power of the great spirit, set her ship in motion, raised it up from the lower heaven, moved it upward by her command saying, arise, arise, era Wagner, by my will, Arise, embrace thou the realms of great Jehovah, arise. The Essenars and trumpeters were singing and playing, and those ascending threw down flowers and perfumes and all manner of pleasant remembrances to the countless millions below. In a little while, the era of Wagner disappeared in high heaven. This then is what followed of Sue's ministration to wit. When the God of dawn, I'm sorry, when the end of dawn, and after dawn is reference number five, and number five at the bottom says Dan Ha. This then is what followed Sue's ministration to wit. When the end of dawn had come, that is, the six years he delivered God and his lords and another thousand million brides and bridegrooms, taking them into the extreme borders of Israel, where was assigned the Asian field of Rustu. Rest, rest Sue with 12 Ethereum worlds. And Sue left Ty as anointed God of the lower heaven for the next 400 years. And God, Ty, anointed lords for the divisions of the earth, the same as had been heretofore. And the earth and heaven prospered so that in the Dan following, there were raised up 2,000 million brides and bridegrooms. From this time on, there was a decree in the Ethereum harvest for 2,000 years, after which time came their great darkness on earth and heaven and, and heaven belonging to it. 
and self gods filled all atmosphere. And as for lords, there rose up in every nation on the earth thousands and thousands, so that men so that men and angels knew not if there were a true God or true Lord in all the universe. And after universe is reference number six and six at the bottom, it says, thus ended the cycle of Sue being 3,200 years. All right, y'all. And that's the end of the book of Sue, son of Jehovah. So let's put this right here. So what I want to say, because I haven't fully gone through it, on our way back from Richmond yesterday, I got an email from um, New Mexico State University. They said, Miss Murphy, first of all, last week they sent to me, uh, because this is the, the holiday season and students are going home on vacation, they said we've been reduced in staff. And because your order is so large, um, it's going to take us longer than what we previously had anticipated, right? And so it's just, they said it was just a couple of them. Mind you, there ain't that many people that work in the library anyway. So they was down to about one or two people at any given time working a library during the holiday season. So they said it was just going to be the two of them, you know, and they had it scheduled to go through and doing stuff, right? So I decided, if you remember, I decided to forego mailing the actual, when I found out we didn't actually have to go there, they said, you know, when I talked to like the second person, they said, Miss Murphy, if you want to, we'll, we're able to put it in PDF format. It's going to take a little bit longer. It's going to cost a little bit more, but we can get it all together and we can mail you the different electronic um, copies, scans and stuff that we make for you. I said, yes, that'll work. That'll be cheaper <laughs> than our flights and the rental car. And then the they don't have an airport right there in the city. We had to fly into another city and then drive almost three hours to get to the city where the university is located in New Mexico. I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's forego this because we was going to make a whole little mini vacation of it. But when they said it, we said, well, okay, so we can take this and we can put this towards a vacation at the earlier part of the year. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> we'll save a little bit of money. So doing that was cheaper than our flights and rental car and hotel together, right? So we decided to do it that way. Um, but anyway, so she said, because the staff has been reduced, um, if you like, instead of just going through doing the entire order, we can begin at whatever portion or whatever collection you want us to. And as soon as we're done with that collection, we can email that one to you and we'll just keep doing it until we're done with the entire order. And they said, just let us know if you want to do this, which one you want first. I said, yes, that is great. Give me the John Lant plates first. The John Lant proof sheets is what I want y'all to scan first. All right, Miss Murphy, we got it. That was last week. Last night on the way from Richmond. Auntie, y'all here? I completely didn't remember to call y'all while we was up there until we had got back and we was in Williamsburg and we stopped to get something to eat. I was like, oh, shoot. I was supposed to call Aunt K. We were supposed to go eat lunch. I don't even think she came in here. Listen, so they sent it and the file, it was, I was trying to download it while I was on my phone, but I couldn't. I got to finish the download. It's a pretty big file, right? So I wasn't able to go through it, but it's there. It was taking a while to download. So as soon as I get off of here, right, because it came back, so a lot of stuff, I just couldn't get to it, but it, it was there. And um, then I had to give my son, he had an exam to take. So I had to give him my laptop. I was like, oh, my God. And my husband was like, babe, it's in the day. Just we go glass up. I got it. I got it. He said, no, you don't. You don't have to download that tonight. Let's go to bed. I'm like, okay. Okay. And so, and then I still didn't have a chance to do it before I started today. So, yes, Jamil says, I got that work, right? So, listen, what I can do, I'm going to finish download it when we get off of here in a little bit. I'm going to finish download it. Well, I'm going to try and download it in the background while I get some of this other stuff done first thing this morning. Um, but they sent me a link. Now, the what I can do for those of you that want it, email me. Like, I know about all of y'all want it. So, but if you email me. Instead of me sending y'all a downloaded copy where we might have issues, I'm going to forge you the email or I'm going to copy the link and send it to you. And you can download it to your 
to your device. Now they said the link will only be available for two weeks. So when I send it, y'all need to download it somewhere because this link will not be working in two weeks, right? Okay, so send me an email as soon as we get done or right now if you're able to do it. And shortly before the, I say before the morning is over, I'll try to get it, but I'll respond to everybody with the link to download it. Send it after you down, yes. Send it, I'll, I'm gonna download it to my stuff, but I'm still, I still gotta figure out how to, um, even, oh, I wonder, well, I could make it right away, but I want to be able to, if you go to my website or wherever, I want to be able to at least have a tab up there where you can go and it can be there already downloaded, but also offer the link. I'll probably have to put it on another link online. I got to figure out, I don't know how to do that, but I figure out how to do it. Somebody can help me if y'all know how. Um, be able to take that PDF format and put it behind the link. So wherever you at you can just kind of click on the link it'll be web-based just in case people want to look at it from their phone and they can't down download stuff because of whatever type of phone or whatever they'll be able to do that so i think that's what i want to do with all of it when i get everything uh i'll have the pdf and if you're having issues downloading the pdf you can click on the web-based one right so We got it. We're going we're gonna to be skimming through it. I'm going to try and skim through some of it to see, um, like, what has. I'm going to try to find all the uh, missing stuff that has been taken out. And before, I'm, I'm not going to promise. If there is a whole book or something in there, um, I'm going to just, I don't know, before we start tomorrow, the Book of Apollo, I'm going to go through it as much as I can today. And if there is something there, I want to make that the reading, right? Because this is the original one. I said that we will stop reading this and get that and start reading that because the John Lant plates, uh, I forget how many pages it, I forget how many pages it is. But we've already read through this one time. And I know some people, you joining in, this is like your first time hearing it or whatever. We're still going to finish it, but I want to bring in the most authentic version and just kind of go through it. I see it, Ima. I've seen it come through. Five, 500 pages. Okay, um, Jamil's 500 pages, the John Lamp plates. Okay, so with that being said, go ahead and send me an email, inbox, text, however you already been getting in touch with me. I'll check all of those things. Um, but yeah, go ahead and do that, and I'll send, I'll send you all the link. So y'all can go ahead and um, start doing it. All right. So we'll pause right here. So we'll see where we start at tomorrow. If we don't read any of it tomorrow, we're going to start in the book of Apollo on page 95. But we'll see. Like I said, I got to go through it. I got to look at it. All right. So let's hop over here. We need to do the Lord's second book first. We need to do that first. Okay. So maybe what I'll do, I don't know. Let me Let me think about it. We're going to keep going through. I wonder if the Lord's second book is in there. Yeah, we got to go back to, um, you're right. I'm sorry. I said that wrong. We just finished the book of Sue. So we got to go all the way back to where Sue started and read the, um, the, the earthly account of what happened, which is the Lord's second book. Thank you for that, Ima. Hold on. Let me put that up there. Page. I'm sorry. So we'll if we come back here tomorrow, it'll be page eighty-four. The Lord's second book. Okay, so let me fix my marker. All right, so we can get it together. Oh, and the Lord's second book, matter of fact. It's only three chapters, and we'll probably read all of that. Read all of that in one day. I'm almost sure of it. Okay, boom. So that's that. We have 44 minutes. Okay. All right, y'all. So hop over to the field guide to the spirit world. And we paused um, Monday because we didn't get to it yesterday. We paused on page eight. I'm sorry. Nope. We paused on page 187, and um. We'll be starting at the second paragraph where it says missionaries in Japan. And I forgot what we was talking about. Oh, sleepwalking. Sleep slapping. That's what it was. I just saw it. Okay, y'all. So, the overshadowing, chapter 8. So, go ahead to page 187, the second paragraph. 
Missionaries in Japan, too, reported on a certain family that was possessed for a hundred years. Does the answer lie in genetics or in the spirits that attend to the family group? Oh, okay, that's right. It was talking about a, a whole family now that was overshadowed. I'm like, y'all got a whole family of crazy. Missionaries in Japan, too, reported on a certain family that was possessed for a hundred years. Does the answer lie in the genetics or in the spirits that attend the family group? Dr. Wickland recounts, quote, from one patient, Mrs. A, 13 different spirits were dislodged. And of these, seven were recognized by the patient's mother as relatives or friends well known to her during their earth lives, end quote. Wicklin, 1974, page 37. In the ancient world, it was customary for the children of the magician, shaman, to carry on his work. The magicians, quote, had an ambulance of familiars, end quote. And when these old men died, quote, the familiars would go to their sons or daughters, end quote. Oaspe, Book of Osiris, chapter 10, verse 10. This spiritual not genetic transfer of talents or powers is recognized in all tribal cultures with Teutonic beliefs. This is how tribal magic works. Quote, members of the same totemic group have spiritual contact with each other through the totem. End quote. Ebon, 1967, page 237, and Rose, 1957. Outside of Australia, however, the, quote, spiritual contact, end quote, may not be so beneficial. In Sri Lanka, for one, rites of exorcism are performed by the Kaparalaya priesthood to remove a preta who is, quote, any deceased person excessively attached to the things of the world, end quote. Usually a near kinsman with, quote, excessive love of the living, end quote. Pretas, P-R-E-T-A-S, are known to be, Pretas are known to be miserable, greedy spirits. One man's father became a preta, a preta, quote, because he loved him too much, end quote. Crapazano and Garrison, 1977, page 249 to 53. Cloying, pressing, impinging, clinging, the sea, the Ceylonese, Ceylonese, Ceylonese. The Ceylonese Prater is more or less the same creature as the haint of Western society. The ghost suffering from excessive attachment to the living, often overprotective parents who stick around even after their demise to, quote, help, end quote, their offspring. And after haint, H-A-I-N-T, it's the last word at the bottom of page 187. It has an asterisk. And the asterisk says, In 1998, there was lots of PK in a fine house in Manchester, Connecticut. of this paranormal activity. Was it a haunting, a possession, a poltergeist? Why, it seemed like all three. Eight-year-old Michael turned white and screamed, a shrill keening. He said a man came to his room and touched his shoulder. There had been other sightings in that household, ghosts, glowing balls of light, furniture levitating, a red eye apparition. It seemed that the grandfather had died before Michael was born. But one day Michael saw his photo and said, that's the man who keeps coming into my room at night. I would have passed clean out, end quote. Floyd, 2002. Page 41. Let me go back. Start this last sentence over. The Salonese Preta is more or less the same creature as the haint of Western society, the ghost suffering from excessive attachment to the living, often overprotecting parents who stick around even after their demise to help their offspring. As Dr. Fiore has it, there is always trouble with these familiar, quote, familiars, end quote, who may impose their own fears or demands. Sometimes they are deceased spouses who, quote, deliberately create havoc, hold on, who deliberately 
create havoc, end quote, with their remarried spouse. That's some crap, ain't it? Fior further elucidates, quote, many of my patients have found that their parents were with them since the parents' deaths. They were often the hardest to persuade to leave. They felt they knew what was best for their children and didn't want to hear what I, a stranger, had to say about it, end quote. Fior, 1987, page 33 and 115. Let my sister come in. Auntie, shalom, shalom. Let my sister come in. Look, I want to say, girl, I know who that was flicking cards off your dresser, all this paranormal stuff happening in her house. Quote, some departed ancestors attempt to mold the lives of those who are akin. The more clannish the family group, the more likely it is. The more likely this is to be true, the obsessor claims the right by ties of blood and has no desire to do anything but keep the mortal in line with family ideals, end quote. Titus Bull quoted in Fodor, 1966, page 267. Circulating in the same kin group, especially in close-knit families, familiar spirits may give us visions, talk to us in our sleep, talk to us in our sleep, or even pretend to be great masters, quote, taking upon themselves any name pleasant to the ear, end quote. And that's found in the Waspy Book of Off, chapter 12, verse 5. Being recently deceased, they are residents of the lowest bound heavens with little to stop them from indulging in their obsessions. Cases in point, Olivia became O.C., only after her grandmother died, Catherine became OC and erected after her father, who had been hypercritical, suicided. Daniel became OC soon after he sat in the synagogue at his grandfather's funeral. Judging from the literature in a quite hold on, judging from the literature, quite a few autistic boys are overshadowed by their deceased grandfather. Quote, spirits usually superpose the psyche of a human who has a similar character structure, end quote. Hans Nigeli Osjord, Possession and Exorcism. Often enough, it is, com it is a common bond in taste and interest that draws an ex-carnate to his counterpart among the living. Quote, to the musician, angel musicians. To the philosopher, angel philosophers. To the historian, angel historians. End quote. Owaspi, God's Book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 20. Gotta remember this one. Let me read that again. Often enough, it is a common bond in taste and interest that draws an ex-carnate to his counterpart among the living. To the musician, you, look, you can think about it. Think about uh, people um, who are in the musical industry, right? Everybody's familiar with this just because it's a lot of videos about it. But they call it people channeling these other spirits, right? And they get songs and inspiration from them. They channel them and then they go to work, right? Often enough, it is a common bond in taste and interest that draws an ex-carnate to his counterpart among the living. Quote, to the musician, angel musicians. To the philosopher, angel philosophers. To the historian, angel historians. End quote. Owaspi, God's Book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 20. There are times when the mortal visionary becomes aware of these like-minded beings who, as George Russell espoused in the Candle of the Vision, are, quote, brought into psychic contact with us by some affinity of sentiment or soul, end quote. Some people call them their altars, their, um, um, whatever it is that they call them, but these are other one-time human beings that are currently 
overshadowing. Like they get this bond. Like they say Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce herself calls her Sasha. Sasha, Sasha fears. Right when she about to perform, she channels Sasha. Like, all right, Sasha, go ahead, take on my body, sis. I'm gonna go to the background, go home, let's get this money. Right? And Beyonce out there popping it, doing her thing. Right? Well, Sasha out there using Beyonce body, popping it, doing her thing. Beyonce gets the praise, but it's Sasha Fierce behind the scenes working and twerking and doing all these moves that Beyonce say, I couldn't really do that. <laughs> I channel Sasha when we get out there and all of this stuff. Like, when you sit here and begin to think about this, people is in cahoots with these spirits. Some of them know full well what they're doing. Some don't, right? These are the ones who, well, I ain't gonna say they don't. Some of them do. They realize there's other people living inside of them. But some of them don't want them there. But some people gladly call them, be like, come help me out, right? Some people gladly do this. Often enough, it is a common bond in taste and interest that draws an excarnate to his counterpart among the living. Quote, to the musician, angel musicians. To the philosopher, angel philosophers. To the historian, angel historians. End quote. Owaspi, God's Book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 20. There are times when the mortal visionary becomes aware of these like-minded beings who, as George Russell espoused in the candle of vision, are, quote, Bought into psychic contact with us by some affinity of sentiment or soul. End quote. Look, I, I didn't even I didn't even realize this was the next thing. There's another little excerpt, and the the title for it is Overshadowed Artists. Listen, the great composer Johannes a uh, Jo Jo is it Johannes Jo I think it's Johannes. The great composer Johannes Brahms, for one thought that most of his inspiration came from on high, that he was, in effect, a medium for deceased musicians. But only rarely are such overshadowed artists or writers inspired by angel hosts that come in great legions, phalanxes of the higher organic heavens. And after organic heavens, there's an asterisk. An asterisk at the bottom says, there is a big difference being controlled by a single entity and being, quote, influenced by a congress of spirits, of phalanx, in the highest stage of purification and knowledge, end quote, as was the ammunisis of Owaspi, John B. Newbro. In fact, when Newbro queried his controls about Shakespeare, the answer came, quote, he was attended by a vast multitude of spirits, and they virtually and really played and spoke their parts, entering within his own spirit. End quote. Nubro, 1974, number 60. I think that was, um, this reference right here comes from Spiritalis, the book he did when he was, um, Conversing back and forth with these spirits who was coming. This And it says number 60. That was question 60 if you actually have Spiritalis. You can order the printed version or you can actually uh, order Kindle. I don't think it. I haven't seen it on Audible. Okay. Let me start it over. Overshadowed artists. The great composer Johannes Brahms, for one, thought that most of his inspiration came from on high. That he was, in effect, a medium for deceased musicians. But only rarely are such overshadowed artists or writers inspired by angel hosts that come in great legions, phalanxes from the higher organic heavens. Typically, it is merely a newly dead person in the lower heaven who returns to the earth plane, who returns to the earth plane individually to find and inspire a mortal protege. Such like are the essential. Such like are essential. Keep messing the word up. Such like are essentially earthbound entities, obsessors, quote, ever molding themselves to mortals of similar tastes and indulgences, end quote. And that's found in Owaspi, Book of Judgment, chapter 6, verse 10. Of the most famous case of this kind involve, quote, weekend artist, end quote, and jeweler named Frederick Thompson, who began painting, quote, for, end quote, the recently deceased noted landscape artist R. Swain Gifford, 
why spiritual intervention revealed that Gifford X, quote, was elated over his power to return and finish his work through Thompson, end quote. The latter actually, quote, deteriorated under the ever-increasing compulsion. He believed he was going insane, end quote. The voice would urge Thompson on. Then he would black out. Gifford X, and remember, when they say somebody's name and put an X behind it, that means this is a, a person who has already died, and their spirit is come back here, and are they're active. They're talking to somebody, so they name them whatever their first name is, X. So this Gifford X would order, quote, do not forget me, end quote. Thompson, in the end, became a fairly successful full-time painter, but at the cost of considerable, quote, personality disintegration, end quote. Gully, 2000, page 381. All right, we'll pause when I finish um, these two quotes on the next page. Okay. The ethnographer W.H. Rivers, 1968, page 331, observed among the Tacopians, Melanesia, a form of possession by, quote, a tua or ghost of their ancestors. Ancestors. A chief is only possessed by the ghost of a chief, a commoner, only by the ghost of a commoner, end quote. The adage, quote, like unto like, end quote, epitomizes all these transactions for the earthbound after death remain, quote, in their former places, the merchant in his counting houses, the banker in his bank, the pope in his place, the farmer in his, end quote. Owaspi, Book of Judgment, chapter 23, verse 22, quote, a feather cannot go against the wind, neither can the spirit out of the body come to him who will not receive it, end quote. Nubro, I'm oh, sorry, Nubro, 1874, page 10. X is 10, right? Yeah, page 10. The Freudian, of course, sees the, quote, dark force strictly belonging to the patient's inner self. Freud wrote in 1923 that Odin, quote, cases of demonical possession correspond to the neurosis of the present day. What in earlier days were thought to be evil spirits to us are base evil wishes, impulses that have been rejected and repressed. We attribute their origin to the inner life of the patient, end quote. Freud, 1923. But we cannot stop there. The great exorcist, Eugene Morey, was able to profile the intruders, quote, with an evaluation of the invading entities, their personality characteristics can be detailed fairly accurately. The subject will exhibit a similar personality profile, emphasis added on similar personality profile, end quote. Morey went on to observe that, quote, those who can be aroused emotionally are strong-willed and act on impulse or complain and express negative feelings, end quote, are prime targets. Maury, 1988, page 120, 48, and 88. Quote, they feed on my negativity, end quote, said a woman with entities. Sagan, 19, 1997, page 151. Expanding that laundry list of magnets is the finding that, quote, with the skeptic, the lazy, the rich, and the lustful, the, sh the Ashars, good angels, have little power of protection. Owaspi, Book of Wars, chapter 20, verse 14. Let me read it again. Quote, they feed on my negativity, end quote, said a woman with entities. Sagan, 1977, page 151. Expanding that laundry list of managers is the finding that, quote, with the skeptic, the lazy, the rich, and the lustful, the Ashars, good angels, have little power of protection, end quote. Owaspi, Book of Wars, chapter 20, verse 14. Those who have worked closely with the obsessed would add to that checklist of vulnerabilities, nervous depletion, and chronic fears, defeatism, melancholy, guilt, self-loathing, self -loathing, depression, shame, and vice, Persons who are excitable, power-hungry, vengeful, quarrelsome, and corrupt 
are also at risk. Quote, the more corrupt a man, the easier he is to control. Mike Warnke, the Satan sellers. Quote, if a man, ex-carnate, had been a heavy drinker, he may hang out in the bars and try to take over a personality. End quote. John Fuller, the ghost of 29 megacycles. And this right here is where we're going to pause it. we right at the hour and five minute mark. But this right here, I want to bring out a point um, where it says expanding that laundry list of magnets is the finding that, quote, with the skeptic, the lazy, the rich, and the lustful, the ashars, good angels, have little power of protection, end quote, OSB Book of Wars, chapter 20, verse 14. So that's pretty much self-explanatory. A lot of times, um, um, it, in OSB, I forget where, um, but it's, it was talking about how, oh, it was, I believe it was when it was talking about Baal and Ashtaroth. Um, remember the story? With Bell, I forget exactly what book is in, but Bell and Ashtaroth, they were playing the, the game of mortal wars, meaning causing mortals to turn against one another while they were acting in the background, causing a ruckus, turning everybody against one another. And they're doing it as sport, right? And they're killing one another. But during this time, they were only able to do that because what they was doing within their own power, if they already lived lives, um, full of deceit, they did things wrong, they purposely and consciously did things they knew they weren't supposed to do. It says people like that, there are shards that are assigned to them, they're, they're good angels, they have little power to protect them, right? So when they would, when Bell and Ashtaroth would start their attack at midnight, it was only so much that the, the shards could do for those who were ensnared in their own shenanigans and daily waking living life, right? And so a lot of people, they would be ensnared at night to whereas those who did their best to live a righteous life and walk and tune themselves with creator and us on a perpetual path of growth, not, not that they did everything perfectly and that they didn't screw up and make mistakes, but because their heart was right or they may truly have ignorantly done something, their heart was to do what was right. When they realized it, they fixed it, boom, and they moving on. Their Ashars, their guardian angels had a lot of power to protect them because their hearts were pure, so to speak, in what they were doing. And they were trying to do what was right. So when the attacks came at midnight, um, they weren't able to touch them. And there was a whole discussion going on about the faith. They called them the faithless, those full of faith in a creator, how they couldn't touch them. It was like, listen, you just lead them alone. Don't even go over there because you ain't going to be able to get past. And they tried it. For a few weeks, well, I didn't say a few weeks, according to the story, a few nights over and over, they was like, we're going to try and go in here and infiltrate. But those shards, the shards were, their, their shards, their guardian angels were strengthened because of the mortal's faith, right? So if I got full faith and I'm just moving like, yeah, and I'm walking in a, a spirit of positivity all the time, which I normally do, I give my shards great power to help me. Because I'm already believing that the best is going to happen regardless. And even if something happened that is completely despicable or wrong, I always look at it like the glass is half full. Okay, so my, my plan must have not been sound, right? I must have made a mistake. I always look and see how this problem arises because maybe of misstep that I've taken. Okay, how can I correct this to make sure? When you have that outlook on life, the glass is half full, not half empty. Half empty meaning, oh my gosh, you go from bad to worse. I can't win for losing. Yeah, you might be a little bit of, they might be able to get you. But if it's, if you're walking in positivity, oh man, that sucks. Oh my gosh, okay, I must have did something wrong. Let me, let me think back over these steps because, you know, we should be getting better results. Okay, what do I need to learn? Where do I need to grow? Where do I need to develop? Have that attitude. When you got an attitude like that and being full of faith, you give your shards great power and strength to help you and come to your rescue in time of need. And they protect you at the midnight hour when Bill and Ashtaroth behind the scenes playing the game of mortal wars, right? And it happens all the time. When we get to it, it even talks about how um, they're... Some of their, well, nation, their, their key players 
was kings against other kings and turning kingdoms and nations against one another. But it even breaks it down, down to the lowest, the lowest kingdom. Remember, the lowest kingdom is what? A family, right? And the rulers of the family would be the king and the queen, right? And so they take great pressure in bringing mischief between husband and wife, right? If you are aware of that, if you are aware of that, you can stay ahead of the game. Because sometimes, and me and my husband, we become more aware of it nowadays, right? And so when something happens, Sometimes, if you're not paying attention to it, if you're not attuned spiritually, you, you can't see what's happening. But even sometimes, like y'all be having an argument, it's like the um, the communication in the air gets gets twisted. Especially when you're both heated and it's a, a hot debate, a passionate debate going on between husband and wife. And y'all might be all up in your face. The wife could be louder than the husband. Husband could be louder than the wife, whatever. They could be fighting or whatever. But with the words part, a lot of time, if you pay attention to it, because they're not listening, their senses are clouded. So uh, enemies playing behind the scenes can play on this game. It's like a game of, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Racquetball or tennis. They're going back and forth. Uh-huh. She said this. What? And, and you hearing wrong. Or they said something and you perceive the tone wrong because of the inflections of their voice. And it's like you're beginning to perceive things that weren't even said. Right. And so that's how they operate behind the scenes with communication. Keep husband and wife always at odds with one another, tearing down the family kingdom. Right. And now the marriages are destroyed. Right. And Bill and Astaroth is behind the scenes laughing because you're ignorant of what's happening in your house. You have to have a strategy to keep your kingdom together. Right. Not saying that y'all not going to have disagreements because you will. Almost every day, possibly, for the first 20 years of your marriage, if you make it that long. If you make it past five, oh my gosh, you're going uphill. Most people don't make it past the five-year mark, right? But sometimes you can cruise, you get past that five-year mark, and it's cruising. But if you have children, during the ages and the growth of the children, there are other markers that you must be aware of. I have a good book. It helped us a lot. What is that book? It was um, um, what was that book? And I think I gave it to somebody. I gave it to a couple who was having issues, and I, I immediately recognized that what was happening. Um, just kind of about like listening to them, and me and my husband, we just kind of began to share some things on what some principles we learned from this book. Okay, so with the different, it, it really is marriage is like another whole, uh, another whole school in life and you get different you get you have your garden angels that you get you get at least two everybody get at least two because they got to tag in and out on the sabbath right bro you take over them i, I need a rest right you get a whole week of r and r and you come back all right what's been going on with these these fools they probably ain't calling you fools but y'all probably acting like fools right and they doing their best well, not your guardian angels. You get Lewis when you get married on top of your guardian angels. And it's their job to help you develop the marriage, help you to develop in wisdom, learn how to work together in a team. And so I think one is in the military was one of the best things for me. Because even though I was learning strategy and they teach you strategy about nations and going to war and, and leading the army and, and all of this stuff, right? Just, just depending on what race you are. Um, I was able to take those principles along with some of the principles that I was learning in a book. Like you are really a, a unit that needs to come together and think about the strategy of your household, right? You got to think about the strategy of your household. It's good to find something to do together, right? And it, you can just something simple, do some, find something that you do together because in that thing and be consistent with that thing that you do together, even in the midst of y'all arguments, say, for instance, say you decide you want to add to your marriage, you don't know what to do, just pick one thing that you can do every day. If you can't do it, if you're not consistent enough to do it every day, once a week, okay? Every Friday before dinner, before we sit down to eat, We'll go on a walk around the neighborhood, just me and you, right? And maybe you decide you're going to implement the element of touch, and we're going to hold hands. So we're just going to gonna take us 15 minutes to walk around a block. Choose the longest block. Okay, well, what direction we're going to like? Sometimes you may need to map it out. 
We're going to leave out the house, or we're going to turn left, and we're going to walk that way, come back around, come back in. Sometimes you got to lay those things out, depending on how heated y'all are, because sometimes you get to, okay, which way? I'm going to walk this way, I'm going to walk this way. Like, try and leave no room for error, right? Literally, lay it out. Uncle JB, shalom, shalom. Avia, grand rising. Yeah, so many uh, types of so many marriages ended in bitter separation, not knowing the evil behind the scene. Yeah, so many marriages could be saved if they're aware of just some of these simple things, right? So plan it. Something that you do consistently every day. You can choose to work out together, go to the gym. That'd be great if you both can be consistent and stick to it, right? Maybe you both like to play cards or something. Okay, every night after dinner, we're going to have spades game, me and you, right? But that may not be the best game to play because people kill people over the game of spades, right? It's always some crap. But if you are part of a, a group of married couples that get together, hang out, and when uh, you guys get together, y'all play spades, and it's the husband and wife team against the husband and wife team, because we do that sometimes, maybe you can sit there and practice your strategy, your eye communication, all these things. The point is, you're learning how to do something together as a team, right? And you could even do something like, me and my husband, we add different things, but something we've implemented over the course of our marriage, we shower together every single day, right? I mean, you're at your most vulnerable state. You're, you're both naked. You can lay your, 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 your thoughts, everything, bare naked before one another, you know, whatever. Pick something like that. Um, or you can choose to, it's just a lot of different things you can do together. But pick one thing, starting off, just pick one thing. And do it together and you have to do it even absolutely even if y'all had an argument that day that's gonna be hard but it's gonna teach you consistency and how to press on in the face of adversity right because you won't have to learn how to get over yourself you know and you're just gonna keep doing it you're gonna do it because it needs to be done right your consistency will carry you through the times where your character hasn't fully been developed yet, right? Your character will come up, but sometimes when your character is not there, especially in marriage, especially in the earlier years of marriage, when the character and the dedication to one another and the vows you made, when that's not there, consistency and discipline will help get you through them rocky places, I'm telling you what I know. We had 21 years, and they are, we probably had, I won't say more bad times than good, but I think with the the older we get and the more time we have, the the good times are outweighing our family began to, to to tilt the scales a little bit. And we've had more good times than we had bad, right? So you probably have more than bad days than good for the first maybe 15, 20 years. But if you stay at it, stay consistent, so you realize you develop some things over the course of time between you two, right? You're, you're just... It, I don't know how to really, exp I, I mean, I can, I just, it'll take me a little while to put the words together to explain it like professionally or whatever. But if you just do it, you will begin to see what I'm saying. And, and it gets hard. Like after you may do good for like two weeks when we got this thing in the bag, but something you best to believe there's going to be a test that comes up where somebody, I'm, I'm pissed with you and I'm not, I'm not. Girl, you better get your buddy here in the shower. Let's go right now um you hurry up i'll get in when you get done i don't want y'all you piss me off i'm no i'm not well ain't neither one of us getting into this bed without taking a shower i ain't say i was going to be a funky i'm just gonna wait till you get out he said all right we're fine you go ahead and get in i ain't gonna argue with you pam you go take your shower first and don't you come in the bathroom either so i locked the door but we got we didn't have like the key lock you got the little Pin lock where you can pop the door open. I knew he was gonna try and get in there, you know. He let me be in there. Make sure I'm in the shower. Man, I gotta pee. Open the door. It's locked. You better go find the key. I'm like, here you go. Here you go. Let me hear if I hop out the shower. Here you come. Uh-uh, get in the shower. And so now we both look crazy in the bathroom naked, wet. <laughs> no, this our thing. We're gonna take a shower, stop this crap. Right? And so, y'all, I got some crazy, foolish stories. But sometimes, you know, picking a whole little shower thing, that can turn, that can be a little bit fun. You know, you kind of push the anger out to do a little bit. You know, kids back. What is y'all doing in there? Oh, my gosh, baby, slipped in the bathroom. <laughs> so you just got to pick something that you can do together. Right? 
Don't do it at a time where you're completely mad with one another, right? Just do it at a time where things are good. And if it's not good right now, you need to do it. Y'all just might have to come together. Look, babe, look. I know things are tight between us right now. Look, but we got to we gotta figure out something. Listen, first of all, do you want this to work? Because I want this to work, right? I know I got my issues. You got your issues. But together, we can figure this out, right? If we just make the pact that we're going to figure it out, regardless of what happens, me and you, we let nobody else come in here. We don't need to share our business with nobody who can help us. We ain't going to put our business out on social media. We ain't going to talk to gossiping family members. If you talk to people about your marriage problems who can't help you when you talk to people who can't help you you're actually adding to your marriage problems and those things shouldn't be shared with everybody right if you don't have any unbiased family members who are married that you can share your experiences with knowing that they're not going to be biased between one or the other then you might need to get some professional help or if you're still with within some type of religious organization somebody that you trust who's married who has time in who's together and things are working like that the people you talk to don't go talk to somebody i mean you can learn wisdom from everybody that i will not deny you can learn wisdom from everybody um a lot of times you can learn what not to do. And if they're honest with you, if they're giving you wisdom, um, they'll they'll share with you what they did that they could have done better to add to their um add to the overall well wellness of their marriage and maybe they will still be married today. Right? But it, it takes two. And that part you 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 cannot deny that either. It could be one person that wanted to work, one that's not too sure. Right? So you're still gonna begin limbo until you come to a conclusion. But make a decision. Make a decision what you're gonna do, right? And so that's what we did. In the face of all adversity, when I'm pissed with you, when you piss with me, we just gonna go to our respective corners and we're gonna sit down and we're gonna take a break. And then we're gonna come back together when you ain't mad no more, I ain't mad no more, and we we just we're gonna figure this out right me and you we the team we're gonna figure it out right you got to figure out strategy for your marriage if you have business and you have business strategy apply them same principles to your marriage right because it's a partnership it is a business right but it's a family business and the product you turn out will be the children who come from you and come out of your household and see how you ran your organization and they're going to do their organization the same way right so you have to be mindful of all of those things right so just come together preferably on a daily basis right i know it kind of sounds cliche now but people say don't ever go to bed mad with your spouse that's that's a good cliche to keep right whatever the issue was for the day before you go to sleep figure it out solve it because most of the time you ain't gonna be able to go to sleep anyway you're gonna turn around this side and snatch the blanket he's gonna be like give me the blanket but i'm gonna push your tail out and get out the bed and you ain't gonna be able to go to sleep anyway right so you might as well go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room. Get the elephant out of the bedroom so y'all two can get on with what you need to do. Right? Make up. Yes. They be, they be leaving all their stuff. I think they be doing that to get back over here. We can take it to them today. All right. I'm almost done, Tootie. So, but yeah. So, figure out something to do together. Build something. It, you could even, look, we had even started doing, like, we like, we like common. That's something we do. We... I know, already told you. We'll shower together. Y'all can do it. Y'all married take showers, right? You learn something about your spouse. Learn all the, you know, maybe you learn about A and P with one another, right? Learn how things things work on the opposite sex. You be each other's test subjects. Do it in the shower. It'll move from the shower to the bed, maybe to the bathroom floor. If you're in the house by yourself, it may move to the kitchen. Just bring some towels, wipe the floor and stuff up when you're done, right? You know, whatever. It's your house. It's your plan. It's your strategy. Whatever works. For you two, right? I'm, I'm for the betterment of your organization, right? So even if you guys um like to do games and puzzles, maybe once a week or whatever, whatever time period, however many times a week, just do that, right? Me and my husband, we both are jokesters. We love comedy shows. And we'll watch any kind of comedy, right? Cursing, no cursing. It, but some stuff we can't watch around the kids. But we love comedy. And so that's what we do. When comedy shows come, we are there. We'll invite friends sometimes, depending on who's here. And we'll go together. Right? Because we realize 
Laughter truly is like a medicine. You'll find that in the Bible. I know some of us then tossed our Bibles away. I mean, I didn't because I keep what's good, toss what's bad, light it up with my matches, right? But laughter, especially when you can laugh with one another at your own faults <clears throat> and how you can grow and learn the lessons, it's, it's a good thing. And that's something good to... Why <gasps> Because they ate it up, son. I and that's some. go see if they put some out there in the refrigerator. They could have just uh bagged it up because it was two, it's like a whole box missing. No, it's in the microwave. I'm sorry, it's in the looking oven. Um, and that's something good to pass down to your children, right? I remember, um, because my our oldest son, you know, going through some issues or whatever, uh, with his marriage and all of that. So I remember me and my husband was like. He should be able to keep this together with all the crap he'd have seen us go through, right? He, you know, he should have been able to. And, you know, everybody learned. They, they pull on these life lessons at, at different times, even if there's a separation or something that happens. But if you guys learn to operate and work through things, your children will pick that up as well because they'll watch and they observe, right? Hopefully it doesn't get physical where you're fighting. If you're having those issues. And somebody's being abused, I will tell you, don't stay somewhere where you're being abused, right? You need to be safe, right? And your spouse, if they're the abuser, they need help by any means necessary. Make sure you and your children are safe, whether it's the man, because sometimes it's the man being beat by the wife. And that that's horrible, <laughs> just as bad as it is on the other side, right? The level of frustration you don't understand that is. That sentence did not link up. But for a man to get hit by a woman, he is... He has a little freeze time moment in his head. He's like, I have one or two options. <laughs> I can smack the living. Just smack, not punch. Some of them take it that far as a punch. Because they want to really deactivate the situation. They say, I can just smack her. She can sit there <gasps> and really just contemplate. And you can sit down like, stop hitting me. Or you can just run out the door and call the cops she's crazy she's crazy you know just do your whole little thing like that right or there's just a third option the man handling. man handling if she's crazy enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could do that that could work some some men we think oh let's just deactivate the hands even though they got legs you talk all like the men in this situation before son you're 19 years old Boy, you'll be surprised for the men on this cast right now, well, on this, watching this right now, on both. Do not grab the hands. I repeat, do not grab hands. When I tell you, you need the full rap hug, I mean like full rap hug until she's on the ground. His leg around me. But I mean like full <laughs> rap hug her, yo. Why don't... The act, the situation, y'all can both lay down. Y'all can both be on the ground. She can be there mad. Make sure she can't bite you. She can lay there mad. You can be there calm. Just hold her in a firm position. I got a question. And just be like, are you done now? Are, are you, you done? done? Make sure you have police <laughs> on speed dial. Your mom on speed dial. Everybody that is a necessity at that moment on speed dial. Because you're going to need them. What about a fourth option? What's that fourth What if... The spouse, so you, you get you ain't even there, okay. But from your situation, relationship, whatever, would you put that thing back over there? What if you just walked out the door? Mom. Could you not just walk away? Mom. You could do that, but then there's the uncertainties, and the uncertainties is what I'm scared of because one, you can have something thrown at you. Two, just something could happen with that. It is a very, it is effective option. It is an extremely effective option. But now you have a lost eye contact. <laughs> so now the beast you lost is on the loose. <laughs> he said the beast is on you. The lost eye contact and the beast is on the loose. <laughs> and I'm telling you, if she is crazy enough, boy. <laughs> You yeah, know, see, not a lot of people is humble like my mother. Look, oh, hold on. I, I, I've grown to be humbler. I, I shared with Key the other day. Look, since I almost went to jail about six years ago. I know about that. <laughs> but those are the past times. And look, past times. Look, and Bella just turned six. Meaning I will 
full-fledged pregnant with Bella. This is, this is about to be an altercation with a third party. <laughs> Go ahead. Fighting all outside. <laughs> yeah, we didn't tell you all the details of this. Go on, get out of here. <laughs> look, <laughs> look, my Ashars helped the sister that day. Because I almost like blacked out. What happened was, I've never experienced this in my life. Truck locked on me. And I couldn't get out the truck from the inside. Wow. I'm like trying to get my doors open. So <laughs> my husband, you were look, no, my Ashars, that was something supernatural because I was pregnant. I was like almost nine months pregnant with Bella. Wow. And I couldn't, not that I was too big, that I couldn't get out my truck. Like my truck, it like, and I was stopped. In part, it was like my truck had seized up and I couldn't get the door open. And they seen me trying to bust the door. I'm like, what the get? And I heard like resonating on the inside of me. Pam, stop it, right? Cause I was, I like saw red. I was about to black out. I mean, I still had a hole in myself, but there was a crowbar in my hand too. <laughs> Can't take <it>, <laughs> There was a crowbar in my hand, right? But the time that my truck seized up, people were able to get away. I'm just like, boy. And after that, I realized. It's going to be without is, mother and father. Right. For a temporary time. Listen, but we'll, we'll, we'll give a little bit more on that story when dad is down the stairs, right? Because he got to be here to defend himself, right? So, but anyway, there are times where you, where you have these. So don't think I'm just like giving y'all, yeah, she ain't. I'm telling you, we got some stories. Some things we probably shouldn't say live up here that we've done. Things that I've contemplated doing. Well, you know, Father, we ain't got to worry about this. If you just go ahead and take them to be with you. Like all these kind of crazy. Listen, you this married couple talk. Married couples are talking now. Get out of here. <laughs> Go. All right. Married. So all of these things on, that will on. go through your head in the course of being married, your Lewis, your marriage angels are trying to help to keep the both of you together. Right. Somebody has to be some kind of spiritual at some point. If you're not spiritual, you just have to have just a little bit of self control. Just a little bit. Give your Lewis, your guardian angels, the ones that dare to help you with the marriage, just give them, just give them a little bit. If you give them just a little bit, I think they, they sometimes they got authorization just to go over it just a little bit to, to pull you out of harm's way because you're not thinking rationally. You're not saying at the moment, right? But your heart is good, but you just had a moment. So I think they got a little bit more power to defuse situations, i.e. when my truck would not open. Still to this day, I'm like, what happened? Clearly, this was something supernatural. I'm hitting a lock. My doors on. Why can't I get this door open? Mind you, I'm about eight months pregnant, so I can't get to none of the other doors behind the steering wheel. The door locks. Tried to roll down the window. Can't get out the window. <laughs> but the door would not open, right? And after the situation completely diffused and calmed down, I was like, I'm just going to pull away and I'm going to go home. <laughs> But I, I'm young now, Wendell. I let's not get into it because hubby is not here. Hubby is not here <laughs> to defend himself, right? But hubby beat me to the house. <laughs> but he was like, "Yo, babe." I'm like, "Don't babe me." Clearly, at that point, I may have. I was almost. I think I was almost demon possessed. I think I was almost demon possessed. <laughs> So, but I know how bad it can get in marriage. I really do. We got some crazy, crazy stories. But if you, like I said, <laughs> I was about to step in the uh, uh, camera. Like, I you, do too. <laughs> yeah, just a lie. She said, "Yeah, I do too." So, um, but everybody goes through it, and I think I ain't gonna say these things are planned. Some of these situations happen to us in marriage because of our own poor decisions. I think I'm gonna get but our Ashars and our Lewis, our guardian angels, like to help us take these bad times, these foolish situations, and turn it around and teach us a lesson out of all of it, right? Miss Amazing Wonders, hey girl, hey. Look, and if you can learn to do that, and that's where your whole little consistency thing with one another comes in, whether you decide every day after dinner, y'all gonna put together a puzzle. Which puzzle? 
I don't care. Choose a, a peanuts puzzle. I don't care. Right? Just pick some puzzle. Well, how long are we going to do the puzzle? Like, okay, we got this puzzle. We're going to work on this. Get the biggest puzzle you can find, right? If you want to set an hour, we're going to do this an hour. And we'll just leave it like this and come back to it a separate table. This is where y'all meet. Just do something together. Be consistent with it. Even when you're mad with one another, come to the table talk. Even if it means y'all putting the puzzle together mad and don't say nothing. Just be consistent to the time that you set, knowing you got to trust that it's going to work for you. It's going to work. Even if y'all go for a week and not say anything, but if you come together and you put... Give me that piece. Get on my darn nerves. They don't piece, that piece don't go there. Go over there. Don't. Don't. <laughs> Put the puzzle together. <laughs> right? You just got to come together. You got to show up until you pass this point. Right? You already decided we want this to work. We want this to work. So even when we have an, it's like putting safety measures in place for when we, it's like the seat belts in times of an accident. Right? I'm going to put the seat belts on in case of the accident. It's going to keep us in the car and keep us from being more destroyed in this situation than we would be if we didn't have it on. All right? So put the safety measures in place. We're going to do this this time, this puzzle for the next month. I don't care if we put it together. We'll mess it up. Put it back together. Get a 10,000 piece puzzle. Tiny pieces. Put it together. Right? And as the, the, the passionate anger times pass by, because you made whatever, as they pass by, you began talking, right? And it's just, you are, you're going to learn something about somebody in wartime. You can literally consider these times, these arguments, you can consider these times of war. And you have to have a strategy in place for times of war to keep your platoon, your division, your team, your army together, right? Because it's tense. People not thinking. Arrows are flying, bullets are flying. You got to do something to keep everybody in place when everybody has gone insane. There has to be something that anchors you, right? So figure out your anger, put it in place, stick with it, right? During the time of battle stations, everybody is accounted and pre is present and accounted for. Just like in the military, those who who are in the military or anywhere, they do the drills. We do. We want to run through fire drills, right? And you practice. It doesn't matter. We, this principle can be found everywhere. Would you plan on some kind of sports team? You play like you practice, right? So in practice, do it 100%. Focus, give it your all. Because if you plan around and practice, you're going to play around in game time, right? So practice the fire drills when there is no fire. Where is everybody going to go in case of a fire? Children, what do you do? Who is going to be accountable for who? Stop, drop, and roll. What if the fire has capture somebody in a room we're gonna walk through the steps is this the first floor is this the second floor you know different like walk through these times so in the case of wartime in wartime in the case of a fire in the case of an attack everybody knows what to do everybody immediately clicks to the plan that's been put in place like clockwork it's like it happens it it, it, it becomes like you don't even think about it because you practiced it so much right but you absolutely have to do that for your marriage right you gotta do that it'll take some time to develop but practice makes perfect so that's it i don't know i don't know what i was gonna talk about this today all right let's get out of here all right y'all i love y'all it is wednesday the, december the 14th 2022 day 288 of year four of reading through the books of the law and the prophets and of the four year consecutive day count day 1308 we read in the waspy pages 92 to 94 and then we hopped over here to the field guide to the spirit world we started on page 187 and we went to page 191 all right y'all so father we thank you that everything is brighter because of you i feel like i i feel all weepy now I don't know. Somebody must need to hear that today. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. But, yeah. It's time to go. Key. Hey. Look. Oh, look. I, I just saw your comment. I sure needed to hear it, Pam. Okay, sis. Look. All right. Then that was for you, Key. All right, y'all. But I do. I feel like, huh, we got to go. All right, y'all. If you 
were in here earlier. I told y'all, uh, they got back with me from uh, New Mexico State University, and they're done digitizing the John Lamp plate. So email me if you want it. When I get a chance today, I'm going to go ahead and finish downloading it, open it up, going through it, and seeing how we can begin integrating it in, seeing the things that we haven't seen that the Masonic brothers of John Newbro said we need to not share that. We'll keep this for ourselves. All right. So email me. I saw some of y'all inboxes and emails coming through while we were up here. Um, so with that being said, I love y'all. I will see y'all back here tomorrow morning, bright and early. 6.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll respond to y'all emails and inboxes um, before the day is over with. All right, y'all. Peace.